Hello and welcome to module three, video two. So let's continue. We left off with the packet tracer. Uh, I'm sorry, packet sniffers. So next, please take um, another snapshot of this. Then you got the other tools such as rootkits. Rootkits is where you can actually put stuff. Uh, it's like a, a malware that is saved on your computer, and um, and it's very hard to detect because what they do is they steal data and then they erase everything. So this way you don't even know that they do exist. Um, so there's plenty of tools that you can do that. There is the fuzz research, the forensic tools, debuggers, hacking operating systems. You can break into the operating system itself. You got encryption tools, um, open VPN. You should be able to use that to hide yourself. Um, we'll be able to do that. Tor is, um, a web browser that allows you to scan the dark net will be able to do that too. We'll be able to set up uh, open VPN. If you ever need to use an open Wi Fi, that's probably definitely you should definitely need that. Although, of course, I do not recommend that you ever connect to an open Wi Fi. Uh, vulnerability exploitation tools um, will be using, not in this course, by the way, everything that I'm saying. We'll be using that in the ethical hacking course. Metasploit, uh, a very powerful tool that will be able will you'll be able to break into somebody's computer very easily. Windows Seven, Windows Eight computers. Um, all they have to do is a user have to click on something, and you're in, and they won't even know that you actually was able to get in there. And vulnerability scanners will be able to do that as well. And I told you that you can do Nessus. And OpenVAS will be able to do that as well. These are free download that OpenVAS. That's something that you could do. Now, remember, all of these different tools, um, as an ethical hacker, um, and you'll be able to use them. You want to see how, how they work, right? Not necessarily for unethical purposes. All right, the different types of attacks. And again, take a snapshot of this. There's eavesdropping. Somebody's watching the data, okay? You can use Wireshark for that, you know, to sniff all the data. That's why the data must be encrypted as it traverses the network. Data modification attacks. Somebody can change the data, captures it, change it, and send it to your destination. You have to be able to check the integrity of the data. No one has tampered with it. You'll use what we call um, a hashing program to do that. IP, um, IP address spoofing attacks. Um, you know, to pretend, you know, steal somebody's IP address, uh, password-based attack, dino, the denial of service attack, DOS attack, uh, man in the middle attack. You know, somebody has a device or a rogue or a fake access point that you go through to get to your destination. Denial of service attack is making sure that you know that a server or even an access point, like we discussed earlier, uh, no, you know, making sure that you don't have access to these devices. Um, uh, and all of the, you know, you got the compromise key attack and the sniffer attack as well. A lot of these tools, um, we do play around with in the ethical hacking course. I bet you because we're not even going to cover some of this. Um, but there's plenty of tools that you can use to break into someone's network or someone's device. All right, so, um, let's talk about malware. When it comes to malware, the primary the primary vulnerabilities for end user workstations are viruses, worms, and Trojan horses. So, this is your big issue. So, please write those down. Those are the vulnerability for a workstation. We got viruses, worms, and Trojan horses. So, what is a virus? Write this down. A virus hides itself by attaching itself to a computer code, software, or documents on the computer. When open, the virus will execute and infect the computer. You, it needs the user to propagate from one device to the other. All right, so that's important. Um, then you got, please write this down. These are the different types of viruses that are out there. You got the boot sector. You got the firmware, which could be a major headache for you if it attaches it. You won't be able to boot up your system at all. You got the macro virus. That means it's embedded within the MS Office, you know, Excel and Microsoft. 
You can actually write codes in there. And if somebody executed it using Metasploit, somebody can break into your network. So never ever play with the security settings in MS Word or Excel. Uh, in the old MS Word and Excel, you could do that, by the way. That's why you got to be very careful when you are using workstations that someone else has, and especially if you have full access, administrative access to the system. Um, you can do a lot of things. A lot of these viruses, a lot of these programs, malware, are installed on a system. You need to have some administrative access for that. Then you got program viruses. They, they, um, they go into the executable program. The script viruses, you know, write skip, attacks the OS interpreter, which is used to execute scripts. Um, so all of these can be done. But I, you know, I want to let you know the antivirus programs that Microsoft has, the Defender, are very powerful. So they will catch all of this unless you turn that off. And if that's turned off, and then viruses can go in and sit still on your computer. So make sure that that's never turned off, okay? So what somebody could do is if you give them your laptop or your computer, they can turn that off without you even knowing, install some viruses on there and give, give it back to you and they'll be able to capture information later on, all right? So make sure that you always double check and that your um, antivirus program is running. And I think Microsoft lets you know every once in a while, hey, your firewall is down, hey, your antivirus program is turned off so uh, make sure it's always enabled it should be able to capture all of these all right so now you got the trojan horses remember the trojan horse is a program that looks useful but carries malicious code okay so write that down so you'll know the difference between what a virus and a trojan horse trojan horse can sit dormant for a long time and don't, don't do anything till you do something till something happens all right, and here are the different types. So take a snapshot of this. You got remote access. Somebody can then a Trojan horse that allows someone else to break into your network or device remotely from somewhere else. Data sending, destructive, proxy, FTP, enable unauthorized file transfers, for example. Security software disabler um, that can disable. These are famous because one of the first things that you want to do when you install a system install a software immediately go turn off the firewall and the antivirus program so you can you know launch an attack or send in files a denial of service attacks slows the computer almost that you won't be able to do anything you know run an infinite program that constantly running in an infinite loop that uses the, C the cpu uh, utilization could be running up to 99 percent Key loggers, this is very dangerous software wise. You can install something on the computer and it's sitting in the background, and whatever you're typing, all the keystrokes are captured. Um, even if you don't have access to a computer, you can buy the key, a key logger. It's a piece of hardware. You put it on the back of a desktop, and then you will install the, the keyboard to it. And you come back later on, maybe a few days later, and just take that and all everything that you typed in passwords account numbers whatever is all in there it's all captured um, if you have access to the administrative access to your computer you can download it and it'll be running in the background how many you know if, if it's hardware like i said you know how many times did you go in the back of your uh desktop and check to see if any where the keyboard is connected to therefore never ever log into any public computers uh, and well, log into sensitive websites, such as your bank or, or credit card company or things like that, because you don't know if there's any key logger programs uh, that are running on these computers, right? All right, uh, take another snapshot of this. These are the different types of malwares, which you maybe you are so familiar with. You got the adware that keeps hitting you with ads, unwanted ads, ransomware, um, they can send a, uh, a code that can encrypt your hard drive and then tell you, listen, if you don't pay, we'll give you a key. And by the way, if that ever happens, um, don't pay no matter what. And that's the reason your, your, your system must be backed up 100%. 
Understand? Please, it's very easy to back up. All you need is an external drive connected to your system. And most of us are using Windows 10. You go to backup, click on backup, and just one click, and you don't have to do anything. Right? And it will back up everything for you. I'm talking about data, and it looks at every single folder by default. And then you can also upload anything you want. And if you just leave it connected to your USB drive, it's automatically backing up every hour. You can do it every day. You don't have to do anything after that. Just leave it on. It's that easy. Uh, not only that viruses can or malware can really disrupt your system, um, it could be that your hard drive crashes, your computer disappears, steal, stolen, whatever. It could have dropped water on it. It doesn't have to be malware. And if you ever get ransomware, you delete everything. And also, you can make an image drive of your system and put it on your uh, hard, uh, on that external drive. Very easy to do too, just within the same utility. A backup utility that Windows 10 allows you to have. With one click, it takes an image. So if anything ever happens, you wipe everything and just reinstall the image and you got everything backed up. And it's just it's a matter of an hour or two, probably less, much less than that. And, Windows, and Microsoft allows you to reinstall Windows um, uh, with with the legitimate license so it's much easier to deal with you never have to worry about ransomware the only time you need to worry about that if you haven't backed up your data then you need to retrieve some of the data and it's going to be costly all right root kits root kits are when they sit on your computer and they steal data and they escape all right and they wipe out everything make sure that you can't even and leave a back door so they can always come back in. Spyware, watches what you're doing. Uh, then you got the worm. The worm is really like a virus, but you don't have to do anything. Worms are viruses that propagate by themselves. Um, that's a big headache, of course, right? Like uh, right now we are, what, what is it? April 18th in 2020, I'm sitting home with the... <clears throat> Coronavirus, COVID-19, um, quarantined at home. That's because that virus, like a worm, propagated throughout the whole world and brought the whole world to a standstill, right? And the only thing that you could do, because you don't have a defense for it, not yet at least, is you quarantine and you try to find out who's infected and put them away, right? Not necessarily not kill them, but quarantine them so they don't infect others. And that's what you need to do if... If a worm goes into your network computers, workstations, is you need to find out which computer's been infected and take them off, uh, you know, uh, production and quarantine them, clean them up. And once everything's clean, then you, you can test them slowly, right? Um, all right, so let's continue. Some common network attacks. Um, what else we got? Some common network attacks, you got the reconnaissance, the access and the denial of service attacks. Uh, reconnaissance attacks. So reconnaissance is you're scanning the area to see if there's, you know, that's the first thing that attackers will do is you scan the area, get some footprinting to see what's going on. Uh, enumerations attacks is part of reconnaissance. Try to gather as much information as you can. You go through stages before you actually launch an attack. You want to get as much as information. You know, there's a plenty of tools out there that allows you to gather information. All right? Uh, so here are some of the utilities that you can do. So please take a snapshot of this. You can perform inf information queries. You can initiate ping sweeps, uh, port scanning, run vulnerability scanning. All of that is part of the reconnaissance. You want to gather as much information as you can before you actually launch an attack, before you do the access attack. All right, I'm going to stop right here at the reconnaissance attack. We'll continue with this on the next video. So please write everything up. We'll take all the snapshots that I asked you to take and upload them, and I'll see you on the next video.